It's been 10 months since the ice storm, but there are still signs of the damage it caused at the Canamore Orchard east of Ottawa. Well, out of this... For me, it's all very fluid, uh, even the focus of the story. I often will change that through the piece. In the fall, I was assigned to, to do a story on uh, ice storm follow-up of some sort, and, uh, and I started researching and uh, found a government grant program available for uh, ice storm victims. This is where businesses come for help, the Canada-Ontario Business Recovery Assistance Program. Originally, my focus would have been that, uh, you know, uh, probably the slow process of getting, uh, getting relief from, um, for ice storm victims. That help includes the obvious, funding the replacement of trees and structures that were damaged or destroyed. The more research I did, the more I discovered that this uh, government program had been a uh, pretty well a blank check for people with uh, ice, uh, for tourist operators. They, um, the government had set up this program where people could make claims and it didn't have to have anything to do with the ice storm. Well, we're going to try and develop this open area. Claire Taylor has submitted a $20,000 proposal to build a patio, fountain, and rock garden. If approved, she'll only have to pay a quarter of the cost. What does that have to do with the ice storm? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> and so that story completely evolved into a story about uh, probably uh, the focus of it was much more related to government waste. More than 400 businesses have submitted proposals to the program for tourism-related expenses, with claims totaling in the millions. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation says it's a waste of public money. I ended up having to do somewhat of a confrontational interview with, with that government official because the program ended up... Uh, uh, they, they had very few guidelines on that program. You could apply and get money for almost anything. There are certainly uh, relations to the ice storm and to the effects on their business. But there are some that didn't relate at all, like water fountains, uh, gardens. Um, but again, we're coming back to what is the tourism product that's there and allowing them to really be able to offer a, a, a relevant uh, product out there. My rule of thumb is, uh, you know, uh, I write lots of stuff out on paper, but I, uh, you know, I'm always looking to change my story and find a more interesting story or find something that surprises me usually tells me that uh, I should be heading off in that direction. Meanwhile, at Kenmore Orchard, it's Halloween. And thanks in part to the ice storm, the damaged trees set the tone for an especially scary haunted hayride. Steve Fisher, CBC News, near Embrun, Ontario. Well, a focus statement is uh, basically something that you say to yourself at the beginning of your project. This is a story about somebody doing something for a reason. When you go through the discipline of actually putting that on the page and thinking about it and forcing yourself to describe the story in 25 words or less, um, then it makes everything so much easier. You can figure out, well, these are the questions that I need to ask this guy. Um, these are the pictures that I need to help move the story along. This is who I might want to bring in for a point-counterpoint kind of situation. Um, it's a discipline that I think is really valuable to storytellers. Okay, so tell us what the focus statement is about so far. You should probably you sit closer. closer. Yeah, sorry. Sure. Instead of an intro, can you just read the focus statement? Sure, it's like an intro. Melanie Seal is a 26-year-old journalism student who is constantly reinventing herself. From her horseback riding youth to her current life on the water, Melanie is discovering more about herself with every day. And what did rowing teach you about yourself? Rowing, yeah, see, in high school I used to hate the fact that I was so big. And uh, I... I I see a lot of that in high school girls today, that they, they try and be these Kate Moss waif-like figures. And uh, I used to think, oh, I wish I was like that, I wish I was like that, and I, but you're not. And the one thing rowing did teach me is that, you know, the stronger and bigger you are, the more you can accomplish. So it, it taught me to like myself, and it taught me that, um, it taught me that I'm, I'm very capable of doing things and that, you know, you have to really appreciate what you, what you can do and, and learn your own strengths. It taught me I'm a competitor and a fighter. That's beautiful.